today we are talking to an absolute legend in the game, somebody that we've been trying to get on the show for quite a while now. Misty Stone is in the building. Well, hello, hello, baby. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm amazing. I'm feeling good. Um, I'm excited to have a little sexy time. I call it tea time in particular, but tea you know, time. if you want to have okay. some tea time later with me, okay. but I think you need to get to know me first before you stick your dick in me or put your face near my clitoris. Do you oh. think so? Yeah, well, I that's think. actually perfect because <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but this podcast tends to entail both getting to know each other and putting the dick in you. All right, let's do it. It ends with tea time. Let's do it, baby. But you let's call do sex it. tea time? Yeah, I do. Even on it, your it personal was, life? Yeah, that's what I used to, I used to have this guy, I don't know if we're broken up. You know how you take a break? I think we're on a break. Okay. How I think we're on a been? break. We have the break or how long we've been together? The break. A month, two months, a okay. month and a half. Shit, I don't over. keep track. That's <laughs> over. Yeah. He's moved on. I'm just so happy. Has he? <laughs> Are you crazy? I don't know. <laughs> Well, well, like, how are his options? Uh, I mean, uh, I just don't think that he could be himself with anybody else but me, baby. And that's just how I feel. How long were you together before this? I think we were together four years, but I think we known each other five. I don't really remember. So it's going to be tough to move what on. What cost the, Is, uh, the break? For him, yes. Why the break? Oh, because I'm a slut. Duh. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm a slut. So you were just cheating on him or what? Was I cheating if we are in an open relationship or is that what the fuck it is? Okay, so I think the young man that I was fucking, he decided to lock the door. And this is our home. So if my man wants to come in there and fuck or do whatever the fuck he want to do, then the door should be open. And I'm too inebriated at the time to realize that the door was locked, but Ooh. I realized it later and it'd become a big deal and he's just sick of my shit. So we're taking a break. What? Mm -hmm. So he tried to come into the room while you were having sex with someone else. He was trying to come else. home to his house. Oh, to the house. No, 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 in the room. The oh. room, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he couldn't get into his own home mm. or into the room. Into the room. Was he trying to get involved with the, with you and I the other guy? Maybe he was going to come in there and tell us stop, or maybe he was going to come in there and join. I don't know. Have what, you guys had threesomes before? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. So it just depends on how that person is feeling that day. So if a guy wants to date you, he has to be able to put up with uh, do I really a lot of openness. Date? Yeah. Okay. Do I really care, baby? I feel so good in my skin and I enjoy it. So if he wants to be a part of my life, then he is more than welcome to be a part of my life. But if he does not have the tough skin, because I'm an alpha female, so I need an alpha man. So I'm more, I need like a Prince Yashua. You know what I'm saying? Okay. A nigga that really put his foot down. Otherwise, I don't think I can be tame. Wow, you really are tough, huh? I because am. you were together for four years. It ends and you feel nothing. <laughs> I've, I've been with her seven years. If she leaves me, and I like to think of myself as a bit of an alpha male. I like yes. to think of myself as being capable of being heartless. Yes. But I'm going to be fucked up. He'd like be a, calling me like, where yeah, is the remote? I can't no, find the remote. I'm oh talking about God. romance, not no, household okay, duties. So that's just, you guys are just dependent on each other. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he's yeah. dependent on me. No, you're dependent that's on totally me. That's totally different. Emotional don't, support. Don't make it seem like I'm heartless. I'm not heartless. I'm just older and mature and I just don't have the, I don't have the time, I guess, for it. Yeah. I don't have the time and energy for that when I have to build myself back up. Mm. I just don't have time for that. It's not about that person. I don't love, I, of course I love that man. He's amazing. He's the, he was the love of my life. Someone who I thought that I was going to have my children with. So absolutely, I love him, but I'm older and I just don't give a fuck. You don't care now, but no. it doesn't feel like the clock is ticking that you got to reproduce pretty oh, soon. Oh, I can get it. You know, you get, there's so many ways to make babies now. Sperm donors. You got uh, you your eggs frozen? A, there, I do. You do. And then, and then you can also uh, do a surrogate. Mm -hmm. True. There's so many options. So I'll be okay about it. That's true. Okay. Mm -hmm. I respect that. Yeah. Um, all right. So give us a little bit of your early life. Where are you coming from? Uh, Inglewood. Oh. California. I am born and raised right here where we stand, baby. I didn't realize we had a blood on the couch Oh, today. my goodness. No? Actually, I'm a Venice show line crib, so get that straight. Really? But, yes. There we go. Yes. This yes, is yes. no jumper night right yes. now. <laughs> <laughs> it turned into no jumper <laughs> like real quick. I got to represent for us. So, but, um, yes, I grew up in a predominantly blood neighborhood. So, how you start messing with the ops? A hilarious. Oh, you funny. <laughs> oh, you real funny. I don't, my grandma actually lives in Venice okay. and I always would go to my grandma's house. So yeah, I, I, I was always, and my brother, all my family, shit. Most of my family 
was from Venezuela and Crip. My uncle, my auntie, my brother. Okay. Yeah. And so Cousins. did you have a wild yeah. ass LA upbringing or what was it like? You know, I wouldn't say it's wild, just normal. Okay. Regular shit. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get killed if that's what you're asking me. Um, there was fights. It was street life. It was regular shit. You see pimps and hoes. You are, a, you live across the street from the local strip club, uh -huh. Charlie's. Charlie's. Is that where you got started? <laughs> no, <laughs> that was where I lived across the street from okay. when I was when I was very young. Um, but I actually got the first strip club I danced at was Exposed. If you're familiar, I think all I've the seen the girls. signs all over the front side of the. Freeway. I mean, if you okay. came into the industry in the early 2000s, you danced at Exposed. Okay. Were yeah. the agents like recruiting there? I mean, it was just a. If it was a lot of new girls, so it wasn't as much work going around, I suppose. Or if it was, it wasn't as much money for the work mm -hmm. at that time. So we always had the side job or the night job of going to the strip club. Okay. You know, you, everybody goes to expose, shake their ass. And then when you got a scene, you just don't go to work that day. Now girls yeah. do OnlyFans with a little bit of studio porn on the side. Yes. Back then it was like full-time porn. A little bit of stripping, stripping at night to keep you going. Right? Hilarious. This is true. Okay, look at you. Look at on the outside looking in. That's exactly what it is. Look at how the paradigm yes. has changed. That's wild. <laughs> okay, so at what age did you start to realize that you might want to get into the sex trade? Okay, so I had a prerequisite of stripping, right? Okay, we talked about that. Then I had a pimp. I had a pimp. Okay. Which is crazy because I was living in Inglewood and my mom moved us because of the strip club that I mentioned earlier. Uh, she moved us from over there because she just wasn't feeling the vibe. Guys following me home. She's wondering why it's taking me so long to get home from my beauty school. And it's because I'm taking the long way home because mm. I got fucking creepos following me. So we ended up moving to kind of like the Friday movie. We ended up moving to Rancho Cucamonga, Rancho oh, Fontana in okay. particular. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we moved to Rancho Fontana and that's where I met the pimp. Running from Debo. <gasps> She tried to get you away from the strip club, and that happened. And wow. I met the pimp. He was so fly, too. Oh, <laughs> oh my, my God. God. It was so crazy. And so how long were you working with him? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Maybe three years, I suppose. Okay. And this is pre-porn. Three years. This is pre-porn. Pre-porn. Yes. And then that's when I got into the prerequisite of stripping. Okay. And then it was full blown porn. What kind of that. dates was this uh, pimp guy having you go yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was very different. You know, I was a streetwalker. It's very interesting. But the cutest little streetwalker you ever saw. Right, you're too cute for that. That's all I'm feeling right now. I yeah. had the cutest little leather coats, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, his name was Famous, and I was looking like I was famous. Okay, I was very cute. Okay. What I stroll were you adore on? Adore it. I was, uh, I remember Orange County. Harbor or something. That sounds familiar. That's what I think the OC one is. That sounds know. very familiar. I'm so thankful that you don't know. I don't, I'm like, I don't know. What you're <laughs> no, it about. sounds familiar. I can't remember. It was so many years ago. I'm fucking a lot older now. So, yes, uh, but I remember it was the OC, a lot of that. And one time I went to Sunset, which okay. is crazy because I, it's my home now. Okay. And so you go from that to stripping. I do. I do. And how long did you strip for before porn took over? Gosh, I don't know. Maybe a year and a half, two years. Okay. If that. And you were Once I hit 19, like two days before my 20th birthday, I want to say, if I recall, that is the first time I did my first pornographic movie. What okay. kind of scene was it? A uh, scene with an Asian guy. Really nice. Really? Yeah. In my agent's bed, like super... Uh, easy for me and made me feel comfortable. My agent was really awesome about my first scene. My second scene was with Charlie Mack, which was crazy because he's a big motherfucker. <laughs> but my first scene, yeah, it was very welcoming. Super made me feel like, oh, you know, I could do this. this yeah, the cameras were okay to you because yeah. you were like stripping, so we're kind of used to it. It was in the bed that I always slept in anyway. Mm -hmm. It was like my bed. It was like, this is easy. It's in the house that I sleep in. It's at the place where I feel comfortable. 